What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you can have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Let me entertain you. Are you not entertained? (laughs) Make your next thing a big one. Today on the program, David Punch. Who's David Punch? What? You don't know who David Punch is? Well, you're going to get to know a little bit more about David Punch in the next few minutes, so stick around. This week's shows, let's see, I have one public show on Friday night. I will be at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, the Video Dance Party Karaoke Jam. Yeah, we just started that back up last night after three weeks off due to a COVID-19 scare. Uh, the One of the pool players, I believe, uh, contracted it, and they're doing fine as far as I understand. But uh, last night, it went exceptionally well. We had the video dance party. Now, the pool tables were available. They didn't have the pool tournament last night, but it was good. And I suspect that next Friday night will be as well. That's the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. From 7.30 to 10.30, we have some shortened hours. Yes, we can't stay out all night. The bars and restaurants have to be closed by 11. Because as we all know, COVID-19 only comes out after 11 p.m. right (laughs) there has to be some science in there i hope it's not all political i really do i really do now we are taking care of each other you wear masks as you walk in lots of hand sanitizer i'm sanitizing the microphones after every use i got plenty of handy wipes no problem yeah, and we'll keep each other safe. Now, if you're feeling sick, if you're feeling apprehensive about going out into public, don't come. Don't come. Uh, there, you know, once all these uh, vaccines and and uh, herd immunity, I, I think that's the, the code word. Once uh, 70% of the people are vaccinated or have contracted it and have been you know immune, immunized to the COVID-19 coronavirus, then uh, we can all go back into the world and have some semblance of normalcy. But if you're feeling apprehensive about it, stay home. For the rest of us, come on out and play at the Rab. Conway, Arkansas, 7.30 to 10.30, Friday night. And the full bar, kitchen's open, pool tables are available, and sing on stage. Yeah, all right, let's take care of each other. All right, that's enough intro. Let's get into it with David Punch. Uh, I got David Punch on Skype, so if you're listening to the audio version of this, I encourage you to check out the video version on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Keys Dan, or simply look up Keys Dan on YouTube. I know I have three YouTube channels out there. The one with the RadioWhat.com logo right next to Keys Dan, that's the one that I saved for the podcast and the radio stuff. Yeah. All right, let's get into it with David Punch, Skyping David Punch, now. Let me get rid of this echo here just by turning that down, and we are good. David Punch in the house. What is happening, my man? How are things? Oh, it's so good. All right, all right. We're a couple minutes late. Because of boxing. I'm a boxing yeah. fan myself. Tell me what match you were watching. Yeah, so it was um, Anthony Joshua against uh, Pulev. Um, actually, uh, Money, um, Floyd Money Mayweather was at the fight as well. Um, it was over in the UK, so I was watching it. Um, I'm from Ireland. But uh, I was watching the match. I was watching the boxing fight there, and um, Anthony Joshua won. So, um, yeah, I was delighted. Yeah, it was great. It was a great fight. Wait, he beat Money Mayweather? No, no, Money Mayweather was over there supporting him. Yeah, there's no way. Because, yeah, I thought Money was uh, retired, right? Yeah, he's retired, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, with his $90 million in the bank. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's fantastic, man. A boxing fan. Yeah, I got punched in the face quite a few times back in, in the uh, mid-90s. That's the 1900s to you and me. Uh, you're you're barely from the mid '90s. You're you're a 25 year old man. Well, I'll let you introduce yourself to the people. If you were writing your own Wikipedia page, what would be the the top two few blurbs that you would say about yourself, David Punch? Well, I'm from Ireland. I'm from the Rebel County of Cork. Um, I'm 25 years of age. Um, I was brought up in when it was sorry. I was brought up. In the music family, uh, my fa- my grandmother, my, sorry, my gra- not my grandmother, my grandfather, um, was a musician when he was younger, and he was, uh, no, he was he was very insp- inspirational for me as well. Uh, I'm actually diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, so that, that that's um, that's a thing that I've grown up with um, all my life. Um, I've been through a lot with it. Um, I was bullied, and I was it was it was it was very difficult for me for socializing with people. Um, but yeah, it really helped me. So music has really helped me. Well, David Punch, I mean, we got a lot of tent poles to to be, uh, to explore uh, with what you just said. And and I know Asperger's is a bit is a big part of your life. It's it's a reason that you you've gotten bullied. If you if anybody goes to your website, uh, davidpunchmusic.com, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, davidpunchmusic.com. There's a bio there. It, it gives people an idea of, of who you are. It gives you, you yeah. know, you have your likeness there. And, but, uh, you know, I do want to explore. I mean, tell me about your grandfather. Uh, if music is in the blood, and I do believe that it is, um, what did your what kind of music did your grandfather play? What instruments? And, and was he in a band? Uh, tell me about grandpa. Yeah, so my, grand, my grandpa um, was, he was... Um, he was in a one-man band, and um, he played the harmonica, he played the guitar, and he played the keyboard. So he used to play gig. He used to do gigs all around um, my 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 city of Cork, um, and he was very good at it. And I was literally just like he's 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 retired now. Um, he's like eighty. He's turning eighty-one now in in January, and um, like usually what happens in like in Ireland now we have like uh, sing songs, we have sessions. We have music sessions in the house now, especially coming up to Christmas now, and especially what happened, especially throughout 2020 and the and the global pandemic of COVID-19. Um, like we'll be having a family session. We'll be having a small one. We'll be social distance, but we'll be all be together. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We always we always do it in Christmas at Christmas time as well. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I I bring up my keyboard. I have a keyboard here now, and I have my music. Um, my my, my Mac now. I'm using um Ab- not Ableton. Sorry, I was using um GarageBand on it, so I'll be using that. And yeah, it's it. I mean, I'll be using my guitar as well. So I know it's great. All right. Well, David Punch, I lost your picture. I was looking at your at oh, your yeah. lovely face there, uh, and I have you in my broadcast I software. I, I don't know if you could Sorry. see me. Uh, if, if for those that oh. are listening to the audio version of this, Sorry. I encourage you to check out the video version. You'll see David Punch sitting there right next to me, uh, his smiling face. Uh, oh, oh, okay. What you got? You're advertising a shirt there. Looks like a, <laughs> looks like soccer. Looks like football. What do we yeah, got? Yeah, what soccer, is it? Yeah, uh, uh, Cork City fan. Uh, my local Cork, my local team. And uh, I support and uh, they won the league there like uh, two years ago, uh, which is the biggest league in Ireland. I support the main league in Ireland, and uh, yeah, I'm a, a very big supporter. I also support uh, Manchester United in uh, in the UK, and um, they're they're my favorite team as well. When I was growing up, because one of the captains, um, Roy Keane, he's um, a famous um, Irish footballer, and um, he's actually from Cork. He's actually living up the road from me in uh, Mayfield. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Well, I feel like a lot of uh, people in the UK, they support the soccer team. Manchester United seems to be the biggest one. And then you support whatever yeah. local team that you have, the Cork uh, Cork City team that you're you're currently wearing their shirt. Uh, but yeah. I, I know that Manchester United seems like man, th- th- there's been, what, movies and, and uh, songs written about them. Uh, why are mm. they so big? Why are, are they the, the most famous in the UK? Yeah, yeah, 100%. They're the most famous in the UK. Um, I've been like... During the sixties, there when the Munich air crash happened in the sixties, um, I don't know, I forget what year it was, but with the Buddy Babes, that was that was a famous um, accident that happened. It was all over, it was all over Ireland or, or sorry, all over the world. Um, but um, yeah, the, the most famous what I remember now was like um, Solskjaer, who was um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, winning the um, the 
the European Cup against I think it was Barcelona or Bayern Munich. I think it was Bayern Munich in Barcelona, and um, it was like last, was like the last minute of extra time, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer won the winner for it was in 1999. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I've been to Old Trafford a few times, um, and I know the atmosphere is great. I love it, and I love going to my going to the Cork City matches as well because it's a great atmosphere. Um, but like when I was younger, when I when I was younger, I hated crowds. So this has been a big change for me, <laughs> and I made friends, and I made friends from going to matches as well. It's great. Well, I also go to my, and I also go to my local, uh, sorry, my um, uh, my my heritage game of um, GAA. So what we have here is hurling and Gaelic football. So we have the stick, which um, actually Biden, uh, uh, Biden, uh, he's actually from Ireland. Uh, his his family is from Ireland, but recently, uh, about two years ago, when he was over here. On his uh, presidential um, visit um, with the T shirt with our leader, um, he gave us a little hurley, and that's our national sport. So, yeah, it's um, it's great. Uh, yeah, I realize that we're both speaking English, but there's so many terms that you just threw at me. I I, I don't recognize yeah, all of them. Yeah. I, I don't know what a hurley is. I I'm guessing it's a stick of some kind. Uh, you know, yeah. but but uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, amazed. And, and you have a a hometown hero uh, that's playing for Manchester United that's uh, right down the street have yeah. you met up with him uh, have you interacted with him at all um yeah I am um, so what happened was that he was doing an actual fundraiser for my cousin and um, my cousin Jack Driscoll and um, he was actually he was um, a very sporty person when he was younger and recently about two years ago and um, there was a big uh, snowstorm in Ireland and when he was out in the snow out with his dad um out with his friends he just fell off a wall and he just par- he became paralyzed from the chest down. So there was this big, huge fundraiser and everyone got involved. I got involved myself because I wrote a song about it, about the accident. And um, and he came, he, he, he's a big fan of Manchester United. And he actually went up to the house up to visit him. And he also did um, a Q&A session with people from the audience as well, which is great as well. And there was other there, there was other Irish nationalities as well, other sporting people as well from it. So, you know, it was great. And I only took a picture of him. I only took a selfie with him, but I didn't, you know, actually speak to him personally, but I would love to in the future if I ever have the chance of speaking to him. Well, David because he was my inspiration. He was my inspiration to follow Manchester United. So, yeah. yeah. You just uh, th- threw a, a curveball at me. I-, I know that life happens, and uh, y- you never know what's going to happen. But um, you're, you're, yeah. you're, what is it? Your cousin uh, is paralyzed now because of a snowstorm. Yeah, he's paralyzed from, uh, from a snowstorm. He just playing. He was playing in the snow, and he was jumping into the snow. And the way he jumped, his, his uh, you know, his um, his vertebrae didn't. Um, his, his broke, the vertebrae broke, and yeah, he's left paralyzed from the chest down. Well, it sounds heartbreaking because he was very sporty. Like he was, he loved the sport. Yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, your your whole town, your family in particular, but your whole town. It looks like they came together and supported yeah. and, and helped to uh, to raise some funds that that he may have needed uh, for his convalescence. I mean, how's he holding up now? Yeah. He's good. I haven't really spoken no since the start of the pandemic, um, but he was uh, he, he's in good form. Um, I actually. During that time, I actually did my, a fundraiser for myself because when I was in music college in Cork, um, I wrote a song about it, and it's called uh, "No Limits in Your Eyes." Um, so it, it's about like like there's no limits in his eyes, basically. And what I did was I did I performed, uh, sorry, on the ear he perfor- he was turning 21, and I performed at 21 venues in one day. So I started off at eight o'clock in the morning, eight a.m. And I finished at midnight. That's a marathon. That's a marathon, yeah, David yeah, Punch. That's crazy, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And that's something that you can do as a songwriter. If the inspiration hits you, and that is something certainly to inspire you, a tragedy uh, such as that can inspire you. You write a song about it. You produce a song. Now, when I was looking at your Spotify, I noticed that you have uh, the new song, and the that's the only one that I could find on Spotify. I didn't find the, yeah. this uh, original song that you did for your cousin. Uh, is that available out there? Yeah, that's available on YouTube. 
it's on YouTube, so check that out on YouTube. Okay, when I was and looking at your YouTube, well, I noticed there was a lot of covers, and uh, you're. I mean, let's go through that. You said that that you were very awkward because of your Aspergers, and, and I, yeah. I I know uh, you know anybody can can Google Aspergers, and and, and I guess uh, explain to people what it is Aspergers because I can I could read the 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 Googled uh, translation, yeah. but but what is Aspergers? Well, what is Aspergers? So what it is is that it's um it's um the brain kind of thing it's like it's like i use different kinds i do different parts of my brain compared to um normal people uh whatever and uh like what like i'm very social i was very socially awkward when i was younger and like i hated talking to people and i felt like a loner and i like didn't have any friends when i was younger um but it, I, I also have like anxiety kind of uh, I also get worried about small things as well, um, and that and that still happens to to me in this day, um, especially especially now in twenty, especially this year now since the pandemic has started, um, it's now it's been crazy, um, but um, yeah, it's it's all about the brain, and it's just the way I think. Well, I mean, it, you know, people are different uh, in in many many ways, and that's just one way, and and your mind. Okay, if most people are thinking one way, you were able to to channel your thoughts into a different direction. You say that you're socially awkward uh, on a yeah. face to face, per, uh, so to speak. But when you get on stage, just looking at the live, uh, and I did notice the the no limits in your eyes live at the Voodoo Rooms in uh, May of 2019. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you if you just looking at you live, you are a natural up there on stage. You really you yeah. work the crowd Don't for any agree. for someone who is socially yeah. and, uh, like, inept. Uh, you know, for one on one, you, you get up there and you're a natural. But uh, go ahead, David Punch. That that was my first. That was my first time playing that song to people, ever, ever really. And like, I heard people in the audience singing it back to me, which is weird, because I I only showed it to my cousin and all like my close family, and they must have shared it to friends, and that's how that's how it got or got that's how the song got around. But um, yeah, that song got that got 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 great reviews. Um, but my recent song, different now, has gone gone absolutely crazy. Yeah, David Punch. I mean, the, the family is wonderful, and the internet can be used for good. Uh, you know, if you want to do it all by yourself, and I'm guessing you're an independent artist, you don't you don't have any record representation or uh, you know any anybody that's agenting for you. You're doing it all by yourself. I most of the videos that are on your YouTube page are right there in the same room that I'm looking at you in. You have your own little recording studio. Uh, you know, anybody for you know a thousand dollars or so, and that's American. I I, I don't I don't even know. What, yeah. the, what the money is in, in in the UK? Is it all pounds now? Uh, now that you're not using the euros? Well, let, let's be honest. I'm not from the UK. I'm Irish. Irish. So that's, that's, ah, yeah, okay. I'm Irish. Make that distinction yeah, for people. Uh, go ahead and correct yeah. me. Make that distinction. The so UK are all British, and we like. I know Ireland. Ireland has uh, Northern Ireland, which is Northern Ireland is part of the UK, but the Republic of Ireland is not part of the UK. And uh, we left literally about 100 years ago, we got our independence. And uh, next, it'll be 20, 1921, we'll be getting our independence. So it'll be 100 years next year that um, the Republic of Ireland got their independence from England. But I know from people, I know from America, uh, American people, I know America has think that the UK is the, are the islands with the, um, Great Britain and Ireland. So that's why that's why UK, that's why people get mixed up. But um, yeah, I'm Irish. I'm not British. No, I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much for the correction. Uh, you know, this is primarily a, a learning podcast. I like to learn from people. Okay. It, purely selfish for me. You know, all my listeners get the the benefit of of me recording this and and putting it out to the world. And and, and you get promotion, but I get content, and I get uh, I get the the uh, advantage of of learning from you. And I'm learning from you, David Punch. Uh, I I do realize that that Ireland is a is a separate entity. I I still thought that they were uh, somewhat together, but yes, you have told me yeah. Northern Ireland is part of the UK. But Ireland, yeah, the Republic, is, is its own thing, and I'm sure next exactly, year yeah. in in 2021, you're going to have a 100 year celebration, a centennial. And besides partying, uh, uh, you know, about the year independence, you're going to be uh, hopefully getting out of this COVID 19 thing that we've been going on with, and, and yeah, being able to socialize more. 
so uh, yeah hopefully fingers crossed because like 2020 now is very bad with concerts um, I was meant to be playing a, um, a festival here in Ireland and that got cancelled because over the pandemic uh, so hopefully next year now I'll be able to play at the festival yeah, but you've been doing this at least uh, a year where you've been getting out to the world. But, but, but previous to that, your grandfather inspired you. And I, w- I do want to go back to to what your grandfather inspired you to do. Was he teaching you how to play guitar and how to play a piano at all? What what, what did your grandpa yeah. teach you? Yeah, yeah, he, he taught me how to play the piano. Um, some, some keys some keys on the keyboard, some, sorry, some chords on the keyboard and some chords on the guitar as well. He always asked me, he always, like, I remember when I first started playing the guitar after my, um, what would be called, um, we have, uh, just before college, just before college, um, in between um, high school and college, I think, mm-hmm. what, what you call it over the States, uh, we do exams. So, like, they're, they're, big, they're very big exams in, in Ireland mm-hmm. to, go into, to go into college. So... After when I finished those exams, and um, it's called they're called the leaving certificate. And um, after when I finished those exams, and um, I started playing a guitar, and I remember going into my grandfather because because I knew my grand my grandpa because I knew that he was going to be, I knew that he 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 plays guitar, so I knew that he was going to teach me a few things, and he always taught me like he always told me to practice your scales on the guitar, and I actually never did. <laughs> up until two years ago, until I started going to uh, music school or music college, and uh, that's when I started doing my skills. But uh, yeah, I should have, I should have, uh, I should have listened to my my grandpa and uh, <laughs> started doing my skills. But look, I did it in the end, so I'm happy. Yeah, you're giving people gems. Uh, learn from uh, uh, learn from the older folks, because once you get to a certain age, you've had some experiences and, and you know things. I, I know that when we're young, it's hard to drill that into people. Uh, you know, at, at fifteen, at fourteen, at fifteen, at sixteen, uh, you feel like you know more than you think you know, and and then by the time you're eighteen, you're nineteen, you're twenty, you're twenty five you start thinking, wow, I didn't know as much as I did. And it's perspective, you know, as, as you get older, you're going to find out that you didn't know as much as you thought you knew. And, I, and I'm glad you had your grandfather that was pushing you along. But uh, it, it, you you got through high school. I mean, you got through your, your grade school and high school, uh, regardless yeah. of, of people bullying you for your uh, differently challenged um, uh, mindset, uh, you know, with the Asperger's and, and those uh, – uh, challenges that you had but i mean did you find yourself you said you were a loner but when you got yeah. into the music when you Lonely. when you were able to start playing the keyboards and the guitar did that help you to break out and and was that during uh your high school days or was that uh, pr- primarily yeah. after you were done yeah so when i was in high school um i started doing the videos and um i also like when i did the cover songs i started doing shout outs on my videos so I had to give a shout out. So like in my video, I said, "Oh, can I get a shout out? Can I give a shout out to I don't know Amy or Donovan or whatever? Or, I don't know, um, Dara Punch or something like that." And like I, I would do about thirty names and on the song on in the video, and my name got around that way. And then that's how that's how we started doing all those videos. This was back in twenty fifteen, and when I started doing that, I started getting asked to do um, gigs. For um, all young people, all like in their, the, we had we had um, part of the discos, um, for younger kids and for younger people, for like teenagers, and yeah, I was part of the entertainment on the night, and it was great. So you've gained some more in the insight, David Punch. You give credit where credit is due. You give shout outs to people uh, that have helped you along the way, or uh, even the the people that originally uh, wrote the and and played the song you give them little shout outs it's nice man you got to tell people uh, t- uh tell people who has been helping you along the way uh, and um when did you, you started playing live gigs what what was the first one and how did that come about did you uh, set that up yourself or did you have somebody in your family no. maybe helping you out no no um so my first well okay my first proper gig uh well not my first yeah my first proper public performance was at a disco for teenagers and it was that the start. It was at as it was it. It was at when I was doing my um, cover songs on YouTube, and I remember going up to the door. It was up my girlfriend at the time. 
uh, my ex-girlfriend now, but uh, this was back in 2013. And um, I was, um, two two people came over to me, asked me, oh, 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 David, or Punchy, Punchy, my nickname is Punchy. <laughs> my, my nickname is Punchy, so I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually, but like, in Cork, people call me Punchy. You know, <laughs> I love it. know me as Punchy. But, um... Yeah, the couple they say, Punchy, Punchy, come over, come over, when you want to talk to you, we get a selfie with you. So um I got a selfie with him. I said and he said, Oh, we're part of the we're part of the organization here. We know the DJ here. And uh, he said, Yeah, do you want to go for a song? And I said, Oh my god, do I do I have to or like do I do I do we want to tell you? And I says, Yeah, F, F, I'll go, I'll go. So I went up anyway and I did a um, Maroon Five uh, Moves Like Jagger. That was the that was the that was the song that was out at the time. And uh, yeah, the crowd reaction was unbelievable. It was great. Um, they all started chanting "punchy, punchy, punchy," and um, yeah, I, I, I'll never forget about. It. I, I will never forget. It was the sixteenth of March, twenty thirteen, and um, it's the day before St Patrick's Day as well. So that's that's why I, that's how I remember it. Well, David so Punch, that was my first pun- ever Punchy man, that had it feel so good. How many people were up on stage with you, or is that, or was this a solo uh, with uh, a guitar or a keyboard? It was a solo. This, it was, it was a solo. Um, I was just using an instrumental on my phone, just plug it in, and um, yeah, that was great. But my first ever proper proper gig, I say, was um, I say it was about three years ago. I say, um, do oh, Jesus, where was I? I was in. Where was I again? I can't actually can't remember, but I was. Re- I think I was in part of the, my music course. Actually, um, uh-huh. I was doing um, in the music course. We do um, gigs throughout the year, so we were. We were playing inside this um, big, huge hall. A uh, hall. It was like a stage, big, huge stage. The proper stage, the whole, the whole lights, um, and the production of the stage. And that was my first proper like solo kind of act. Wow. Playing. And I did pub gigs as well. I did bar gigs as well. So I did a few of those as well. But um, yeah, no, it's great. I love it. I miss it as well. I miss it. Well, David Punch, uh, 2013 feels like it's so long ago. Uh, it's uh, it's a mere seven years, but but with this year, uh, every every day feels like a week, every week feels like a month, and every month feels like a another year has gone by. Uh, but uh, you know, 2013, how long had you been playing uh, at that point? And was it was at that point were you completely taught uh, so, uh, solely by your grandfather, or were you uh, taking music classes in high school? So I was taking, so when I first started, uh, when I was in primary school, mm. uh, junior school, I think it would be called over in, over in America, um, I was um, in, I was 14, I think I was, oh, okay. and sorry, I wasn't actually 14, sorry, I was um, 12. Oh, okay. I was, a, I, was a, I was between 10, 11 or 12, <laughs> and I was playing piano, my first, my first intro was actually piano. But in Ireland, we played, oh no, in Ireland, actually, um, we have the recorder. Uh-huh. And uh, that, was, uh, that, that was my first, actually, proper instrument to play. Um, I also played the bongo drums as well. And I was trying, I was going to go into the drums, play the drums as well. But my rhythm was off and I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> play, I couldn't play the drums. But uh, yeah, I, got, I, I started playing uh, the piano first and, and like, I was shot. I was very bad at the start, but I just practice, 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 and I became very good at it. And then when I finished my my grades um, in high school, which is the leaving cert here, the equivalent, um, I started playing guitar. I started playing, and I actually started using YouTube. YouTube was the best thing I ever used for doing stuff on my own. Just, just learning it. I was that's how I self learned. I learned it from YouTube, and that was a great. That was a great. Um, that was a great. Um, what's the word? Um, it was. It was. I, it was the thing that I always. It was. It was the. It was the software. It was the, the website that I always used for looking up stuff for songs. Um, so I was using. I was using that, and then. Throughout the years, then I was in singing. Le- I was doing singing lessons. I had a vocal coach. Um, I my I, I did a, I did my own song. I did a, my own song. I did a cover song. 
in front of, as I said, about 900 people, maybe 500, between between 500 and 1,000 people um, at a country fair. And um, I did, what did I do? Bruno Mars, um, uh, Uptown Funk. Uh, <laughs> that was great. That was unbelievable. Lot. I had like backing singers and I backing dancers as well for it. It was great. Yeah, David and, Punch, uh, that is fantastic, man. Yeah, it's crazy, like, it, it sounds like you you went you hit the ground running. But yeah, YouTube, I found that to be a, a wonderful tool for anyone that wants to put themselves out there to the world. And, you know, if they you know, you used to have to beg someone to give you a chance. Hey, uh, you yeah. know, please, I'm good. Listen to this demo tape. Now you have your own yeah. channel that you could put out to the world and it really uh, Justin Bieber, I think he started like that, uh, where he started on YouTube and and people discovered him there. Uh, and I think there's quite yeah. a few other artists that have been uh, discovered on YouTube. Uh, you know, and, yeah, and, certainly. Yeah, and I know that they have. they can pay you a little bit uh, here and there, but the the notoriety of it uh, and and just hey, check out this YouTube. Would you share it for me on your social media? Yeah. That is a, a nice thing that you could ask your friends and family to do. Yeah. And it could skyrocket from there. I mean, you know, mm, exactly. but, and that's something that you've been using uh, since, uh, I guess, to what, 2013 or, or somewhere around there? Yeah, I was using it since 2013. Uh, I was coming on and off it because my mom and my parents didn't want me on it. But yeah. now, since I'm now older and wiser, I can still use it. I rarely use it now because I'm actually busy with my full time job at the moment. But um, I'm trying. Like I, I, I will get back to it some some stage. Uh, doing covers. Um, I have I have all the stuff now on my laptop now as well. So um, hopefully, I'll I start uploading some more stuff up up on my YouTube, as well as well as my other socials. So. Well, David Punch, it's hard to make your your music uh, a life's uh, career. Uh, because uh, a lot of people are uh, the word starving artist comes to mind and it's been said many times on this podcast uh, but as long as you have it sounds like you have a day job that's that it's paying the bills it's it's bringing the money that you need in maybe uh supplying some of the insurance that you need and that, that affords you the ability to do the the creative stuff that that keeps you sane exactly. hopefully uh, yeah, hundred percent. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But what kind of yeah, equipment are, are you using there? You could teach the people, uh, you know, uh, what kind of equipment you need to uh, set up your own video uh, and your own audio engineering. Uh, yeah. What do you What are you using yeah, so there? What, yeah. So what I have is I have a I have an iMac laptop. I have Apple laptop. Sorry. Um. So I have the 2015 version, which I got off my friend. Um, so I got that off him. It can do it, it. It can it can do the job basically as well as the newer versions of the Apple laptops. Um, I also have my phone, which is a great camera. It's um, a Samsung A forty one. Um, it's a great camera as well. Like I I used it. I haven't used it for my videos yet, but the camera quality on it is absolutely amazing. Um, I also used on. On the laptop, on the Apple laptop, I'm using GarageBand at the moment. It's free on the MacBook, um. So it's just great to just like put down chords and like you know on like, I like you can use you can use the, the key you can use the keyboard on the, the on the laptop to actually make sounds from it. Um. Also, I have a Blue Yeti microphone which I'm using for my vocals and I'm also using for my guitar as well. So I'm just literally plugging the plug in the USB Blue Yeti microphone. I'm just play my guitar, and that's how to record it, and that's how the song gets played. Um, what else I use? I also have a MIDI keyboard as well. So I just connect that up, and I just connect the MIDI keyboard onto the laptop and just play away and record stuff on it. And um, that's how I started. That's how we did um, um, in this together which is also on YouTube as well. Yeah, some of so, the yeah. Uh, it, it sounds just fine, uh, really, and you even have effects uh, for people that that don't know uh, the echo it helps to fill out your your voice a little bit uh, if you don't yeah. have uh, you know the right amount of trill. You throw a little echo on there, and and I know that there's uh, controversy over the, the what is it the um, using reverb uh, over using reverb or over you what, what is yeah. the one that T Pain and and Cher was using the uh, uh, um. 
It changes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of her voice. Um, oh. I know it, it just fell out of my head. I was just I, yeah, I had it on the tip um, of my tongue. <laughs> I can I can see it. I can see I can see the word in my head. Like um, right. It's um, oh, it's um, changing of vocals. What's it called? I forget what it's called. Oh my goodness! So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I know. I know. But it, uh, either way, it's it's overdubbing, and, and a lot of people say, "Ooh, you know, people use overdubbing; it won't sound the same live." But yeah. it, it, pretty much everyone, since it's its invention, has used it in some way or another. It's only that T Pain and and uh, Cher famously have yeah. overused it to where it, it really, um, uh, it, you know, changes the effect of your voice. Uh, so really, it couldn't be used uh, live that way. But I, I noticed yeah. you have a little echo. Is is that added with the garage band or is that on your yeti is that a setting there um no it was on my the on garage band on garage band um so yeah like but then like i normally what i do now is just do my own bits here and then for my song different my my new single my recent single um i just i just sent that over to the producer and then he just started mixing me he, he just started mixing it and adding a few bits and pieces to the song and yeah it was great it's great collab that way as well very cool i mean it, it sounds just great and, and and it's minimal equipment i i mean it, it sounds like you you were able to to uh to to buy this in in um I guess way under a thousand dollars, I suppose. And, and yeah, we, was, yeah. we kind of touched upon it. What what's the the money in in Ireland? So it's a uh, euro. Euros. Yeah. Oh, you're still part of the year uh, of the European nation yeah. then, or yeah, European yeah, Union? Yeah, we're still part of the European Union. You do care. How about that? And how is that affecting uh, people in trade uh, with the UK? Uh, I know that they're having their their own problems over there. Yeah. The, the main, the main, the main reason, the, the main bad thing about this, I say, with the Brexit is about the border, because they're saying that if there's no deal, there's going to be a border um, between Northern Ireland and South of Ireland, which is not going to happen because there has been um, negotiations between um, the UK and the European Union about it. So I think that's gone. That's because of the Good Friday Agreement um, a few years ago. Um, that's not going to happen. But apparently, if there's going to be no deal, there's going to be actually both around the UK. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be weird. It's going to be scary, um, and especially buying products from from the UK now, they're going to be very dear as well. So, well, there was a, a there was war between the North and South Ireland, right? Or, or North Northern Ireland and and Ireland proper? Uh, is is that are there still uh, conflicts that happen from time to time? Um, that was that was back in the eighties, sixties. It was the troubles. Um, I think. Troubles. Um, there's not much. There's not much. There's not much there now. Um, we still we have we have good relationship between the north and south. Um, but like, yeah, you like back 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 in the day, back when I back before when I was born, there has been troubles between north and south because Northern Ireland was supposed to be the Protestants and the south then was all Catholics. Christians, and um, yeah, no, no, I think, I think we're all, I think we're all good because they're thinking, they're thinking of doing a referendum for United Ireland sometime in the future. So, so instead of twenty six counties in the Ireland Republic, there'll be thirty two counties. See, you're giving me history there, and I've heard of the Troubles, and I didn't realize that it yeah. was uh, it, oh, over a hundred years ago. I mean, I, I, I've always, I mean, I still see it was not. It actually wasn't 100 years ago. It was about, like, the 80s. Oh, like the 19, okay. The 1980s, yeah. Yeah, so close it was. And then Bill Clinton then actually started doing the Good Friday Agreement then in the 90s, and then that's how it finished. That's why it's so fresh in my mind. I was alive during the 80s. I, I graduated in, in 1986. I mean, but for sure, uh, you know, I, and I've seen movies where the North and uh, the Northern Ireland, uh, you know, have f fights and, and they have their, their yeah. militia. And okay, so that was going on as oh, that's recent history. That's contemporary. And but it's all good now. Everybody's getting along. That's what we should be doing. Quit building walls. Let's uh, break down these walls <laughs> and just get along. Just love and listen to some some good David Punch music. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that'll help people uh, get along. But uh, 
since since 2013, you've been uh, perfecting your craft. Um, and are you strictly solo? Because I do see every once in a while you get up there with a band. Is that uh, regular bandmates yeah. that you play with? Uh, I was trying to get a regular actually this year to do band stuff, um, but but because of the whole pandemic and then I couldn't, we couldn't do it. But um, yeah, before before I was single, I was before I was um, a solo solo artist, um, and I always wanted to become like become part of a band. But with this music course that I did in 2018, 2018, 2019, I started playing with bands from my course, and I really enjoyed it, and I want to I wanted to explore it more and um, just do my own songs and do cover songs and definitely gig around Ireland and you know definitely gig around Cork as well um, but um, yeah like all my music friends though I still have I still have um, contact with them so it's great because I know one of my one of my friends now he's um, becoming um, a sound engineer so I'll be, I'll be going on to him now soon now for a uh, to recording, so you know, we and see, but um, yeah, I look like they're like some of them are becoming music managers, and some of them are becoming journalists, and then some of them are becoming musicians themselves. No, it's just great, you know, they're all my contacts now in Ireland, so it's great. See, David Punch, it's good to be a good person and and you develop relationships from early on because you never know uh, who these people are going to be when they grow up. They they might have yeah, interests yeah. and 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 you're all going to be able to help each other. You'll you'll supply the talent and they'll supply the the uh, promotion and help you all, and you'll all help yeah. each other. And that that's a wonderful thing. We need to be helping each other. And that's one of the reasons that I started this podcast is to help people all over the world, really. And here I am talking to David Punch over there in Cork, Ireland. Ireland. I had to look up yeah. where where Cork is, and I'm getting a little <laughs> history lesson there. I, I, yeah, do, you, I Ireland, yeah. do you speak any Gaelic at all? Because you, you mentioned Gaelic a little bit. Ta ta ta. It's malum, it's malum, it's malum brack. It's malum Kali. Cade Mila Foyta. Oh my gosh! Yeah. One will Caligum Dulgadian Laris is the famous one. Or a. Tug Mahon is another one as well. That uh, so, d d yeah. do you speak Gaelic with your grandfather, or you know, or, or anybody no, in your family? I wish to. I wish. I wish. I wish I was. Yeah, because like we're from Ar like I'm from Ireland, and we're all from like the, like we don't speak our actually national language because back in the 1800s, whatever the English came over and took over, and that's how we lost our Irish our Irish language, our our identity. Um, but there, there are still places in Ireland called the Great Talk, uh -huh. and that's where Irish-speaking people live. Uh, I, I've so, been told I've been told that I'm I'm half Irish, and, and you know when I got married, I got married in in, in an Irish national kilt, and I, I, you know that was uh, uh, oh yeah the Scottish kilt yeah yeah well there was the Irish national uh, colors though um, the 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 green with the yellow and the and the black piping oh, yeah. in there it, it was a, a tart uh, an Irish tartan um, that I used oh, yeah so um, I mean I'm I, I've celebrated that that piece of my life you know from time to yeah. time and i do appreciate ireland it's on, it's on my bucket list it's it's one of the places i want to go you know i've yeah. i've seen the green and, and the castles and and just yeah. the beauty of it uh, you know give me yeah, a little blarney tour castle. blarney blarney castle is the best like all all the uh, all the american people go there blarney castle just kiss the blarney stone blarney okay is that somewhere close to yeah. cork or 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 where whereabouts is. is that yeah yeah, yeah, it's about twenty minutes straight from Cork. Um, usually, what happens is that there, there's a cruise, there's a cove, Queenstown, where the Titanic was. Uh -huh. Um, it goes from there. Um, there's like cruise ships coming from all over the world, and that go that the part that it docks at Cove, and there'll be buses going from Cove to the to the city centre, and also to Blarney as well to Blarney Castle too. So there's a lot of four tourists go to Blarney Stone. No kidding, great, David Punch. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, a famous yeah. place! So the castle, I, I, the I, oh, it is. Oh, it's most famous place. It was on. It was on. It was on The Simpsons there a couple of years ago. Yeah. It it, well, well, yeah, yeah. Have you yourself kissed the Blarney Stone? I actually haven't. <laughs> I think it's one, my, it's one of my. I think it's one of my. It's one of my things to do. I say before I before I die. 
No kidding. It's, it's uh, only yeah. 20 minutes away. You can almost walk that. <laughs> I could, yeah. I'd cycle, like the cycle. Yeah, but I won't be able to, I won't be able to walk it. <laughs> All right. Well, besides making music and, and you do, uh, you know, beautiful covers, a lot of people don't know that, that when you're, you become a musician and you set your mind to making a, a living at being a musician, uh, do you have to play originals? Do you have to play covers? You could be a good party band if you know enough covers. Now, previous, yeah. previous to you to getting on stage with, with your, your fellas there, uh, and you were uh, on stage alone, were you primarily using your, guitar or were you dragging the the keyboard up with you um, i was using the, the guitar the guitar i find yeah. that that <laughs> a guitarist really you could you're so mobile it you know somebody yeah. says hey uh we uh, can you be here uh tomorrow night it, it's it's so much easier to grab your guitar and i'm guessing acoustic guitar only or, or yeah. electric yeah acoustic guitar but acoustic. I, I like to go into electric guitar though sometimes what what kind of acoustic cousin, guitar and who who bought you um, that it, who bought you that first? I bought one? the guitar. I bought the guitar. Actually, my granddad was there as well at the time. Was well, actually he bought he 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 paid half of it and I paid the rest of it. Um, what kind of guitar? Um, it's a Sigma acoustic guitar. Yeah, it's like a Sigma Martin kind of guitar. Yeah, um, it's actually broken at the moment <laughs> because there's something wrong with the um, with the. Uh, with the not with the bridge and with the the frets, but um, I'm I like I that guitar for the past six years. I say so, I definitely need an upgrade now. I get a new guitar. Okay. But, um, I have my granddad's. I have my granddad's lap. I have my sorry. I have my granddad's keyboard. So the keyboard that he was using for the gigs, I have it now. Oh, so, that's fantastic! It's keeping. It, it, I'm yeah, glad he I, had that in the family. What what kind of keyboard is it? Yamaha, I think. I actually not too sure. I have to check it. But yeah. it's a Yamaha one, yeah. It's pure, it's a proper, proper stage. It's like, I think it cost it over a grand. 66 um, keys or 88? 66 or 88? I think it's 88. I think it's a proper stage. Oh, oh yeah, 88 to drag that up and down off stage. That, yeah, that's a little yeah. more difficult. Yeah. That's a little more difficult. I have an 88 I think, I think key. 88 or 66. Well, no, the 66 not, is a little shorter. Yeah, it could be a 66, but not too sure. I think it's 66, though. Yeah, you could probably put that under your arm and just uh, you know walk around with a sixty six. Oh, no, oh no, oh no, I can't. Oh, not now with the six. No, 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 no. I think it's the eighty eight. Okay. Yeah, eighty eight uh, is about to break my back. I I have one that I, I bought it at the uh, local guitar shop and and bring it into the house. Uh, n nearly nearly uh, killed me, but uh, hey, it was totally worth it. I, I have a fifteen year old daughter that that plays it like wonderfully. Oh, okay, very good. Oh, I encourage her. I, I, I love it. I wish she'd play it more. <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice when she plays. It, it makes me feel good that that she has yeah. that the ability uh, to to play. I, I have guitars in the house. I I don't know how to play all that well. Uh, my my forte, I guess, is is talking into microphones and playing other people's yeah. music at parties. MC. Well, uh, yeah, I've been a DJ uh, since, I guess, 1986. That's back in the 1900s, kids, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I've enjoyed my, myself and learning about uh, new music like David Punch music. I, I'll probably play it at the club uh, next week. Now, <laughs> let me tell you, the new song, it is so on the nose. I can tell that it's so from the heart, it, and it's a long time coming, uh, you know, just listening to the lyrics, listening to the words of the song, it starts off right away letting you know, hey, this is a song about pain. I mean, tell it in your own words, yeah. David Punch. Tell me about what, what different means to oh. you. Yeah, so what different means is about being different. I am different. I'm different. We're all different. Um, so basically it's about, like, you know, being, not being. It's about... It's about like just like don't be don't. Just, oh, it's hard to explain it. Um, like it's 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 about like not just believing in yourself and don't be giving, don't ignoring people who think different about you. Um, uh, just be yourself and ignore the haters and ignore the people who bully you, and just live your life as it, as it's meant to be. Um, but like you're just, you're just different in your own way and it's about that song it's about that 
Well, David Punch, you know, writing this song, these are the kind of songs that inspire, that connect uh, like-minded people, yeah. people that are that are going through the same problems. Uh, you know, what, you know, yeah, you yourself exactly. know that when you were 10, 11 years old, 12 years old, you thought maybe you were the only person that was going through this. And now that yeah, you're, in, you know, in your yeah. mid-20s, you're able to to uh, inspire those that that may or may not know that they're the only ones. They're not the only ones. They're they're in this together. So y- you might yeah. have have written an anthem, a- and did you completely produce that yourself? Who who helped you put d- different together? So um, my my producer um, Dave Skilton from um, Galway. He's one of the best producers in Ireland. Um, he really, really hit me with the song. Um, I couldn't be, I couldn't go up to Galway, um, because of the COVID. But I was able to record my vocals with my with my Blue Yeti microphone, and I was also be able to record acoustic kind of stuff with my guitar, and I was able to send that to him, um, through the internet. And yeah, he just the way that he did it was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, we also co-wrote the song as well, so that was great as well to do. And what we came out was absolutely unbelievable, and the response from from the song is absolutely blown out of, out of proportion. It's great, David it's Punch. He sounds he, he sounds like a magician because you uh, don't have necessarily a proper uh, recording studio. I mean, you have the yeah. equipment, but you don't have your walls, you know, uh, uh, yeah. put up with eggshells or have uh, yeah. sound deadening equipment in there. But it sounds like he took. Uh, the recordings that you made and and put put them through a filter of sorts. I'm not even sure how how they do it. Uh, I've only recorded <laughs> uh, you know demos for people. I've I've really never been much of a sound engineer. Uh, and wearing these yeah. headphones my whole life, I'm about half deaf. I think you know possibly, but uh, you know hey, yeah. and, and that's another little tidbit. Protect your ears, kids, especially when you're yeah. when you're out on the road and you're listening to all you know all this loud music up on stage but i'm glad that you have uh, a a um a producer that uh that has been helping you in galway that's that is that is it's good to have people that that know their stuff and, and are able to yeah to and then get things together for you go ahead david punch yeah and then he like he got on he got he got on to me then about he got to someone in to do the marketing for the song and that has gone like like my marketing before was very was basic and now with, with my with my other friend uh, Lou Cullen from uh, Tune Release, um, they're great. They absolutely, they helped me so much, and um, just promoting my song and getting my song out there to all the radio stations in Ireland, which is great. Oh, that's super fantastic. Well, if I get a copy, I'll put it up, up here on RadioWhat.com. It's sitting right here behind me and uh, and put that on rotation because it is a beautiful song and it is inspirational. But let's go back a, l- a little bit. You were playing, uh, you know, all, all by yourself for the most part until, what, last year or the year before you started to, to get a band together. What? Uh, and this is yeah. primarily because you wanted to start uh, doing fuller gigs or bigger gigs. Uh, what, what were the bandmates that you were uh, – who, who did you pull in at first? What, uh, another uh, uh, keyboards or a drummer or, or bassist? Uh, yeah, know, so who it the people was the um, electric guitarist first. Electric guitarist first, and then it was the drums, and then it was the bass. Um, so I actually found them through an open mic in Cork, and uh, yeah, it was great. They were always there, and I always started chatting to them. And since when my since when my cousin had that fall, I want always wanted to do like um, a release night for my single. And what I did, I went to the, one of the famous one of the famous bars in Cork, and I played in one of the, sorry, one of the famous music venues in Cork. And I played there, I got a band together, and that's the band that you see in the video um, at the live of the Crane Lane. And, yeah, I'm still in contact with them. I'm still in contact with the electric guitar player, and I'm still in contact with the bass player. Um, I haven't seen the drummer lately because he's living in Middleton, another suburb, another area in, in Cork. But, uh, yeah, no, it's great. No, I like I'm still in contact with him now at the moment. So hopefully next year now I'll get a band going. 
See, David Punch, you're giving people more gems. If you want to meet the local musicians, you go to the open mics. Those are the same people that are trying to get together with other musicians to to make magic, yeah. essentially. Uh, you exactly. know, pull yeah. pull things out of thin air, uh, out of your mind. When did you you find the ability to? I mean, where did you find the ability to write songs? What uh, were you always a, a poet in school? Were was that one of your your good your <laughs> skills, a creative writing? Or how did you get the ability nah. to, to write music? And can you read music as well? I, yeah, I can read music as well now, yeah. Um, I started uh, reading music when I was in um, when I was in another music college in, when I was younger in the Cork School of Music. And uh, that's when I learned my, my music theory from Paul Hannon. He was a very good guitar player. And he's now teaching in my, in my other school now, in my other music school at the moment, which is funny. But um, yeah, he was my first teacher doing music. But like, I always like doing music theory. But I always learned music theory when I was in primary school doing my music for my um, piano stuff, piano, doing my lip, my piano grades. So that's how I actually learned. Started doing my scales on the keep on the on the piano, looking at the notes, looking at the the semi breeze, and looking at the crotchets and whatnot, and looking at the treble clef and the bass clef, and um. But then, like since then, I just started practicing learning it on the keyboard and the on the on the guitar. Maybe yeah, like it was tough on the guitar doing the scales, but uh, no, I just that's how I learned music. Well, I'm fine. Music, but. <laughs> David We're Punch. Songs. <clears throat> I'm glad you finally uh, listened to your grandpa and started playing those scales because that's what's uh, keeping your yeah. your fingers nimble and, and making you. Uh, well, I guess once you you play a scale, uh, it, it it leads you to other places. You get more ideas. It's well, yeah. uh, about phrasing yeah. and about uh, chord progression and and building things up. And the you know, I, yeah, but like for writing, go ahead. But for writing songs, but sorry, no, but for writing songs. As of answering or or a question about the songwriting, yeah. Um, for the like, like I actually like first started writing songs when I actually started like getting bullied. Actually, when oh. I had a bad day in school, I like had a pen and paper with me, like and I started writing stuff. I said, "Oh, I was, actually like I remember to this day. I remember I was in school and I got bullied. Like and I was like they're all, they're saying nasty things about me. Like and I I wrote something about having a spurgers. I was like that could be a song." That was my first ever song actually that I wrote. And then I, I wrote a song then about my grandfather as well during that time. And then I wrote something about, I don't know, my grandmother or something dying. And then and then I remember something, I, f I forget. This is about, a few, about three or four years ago. But I wrote loads of songs since then. And now since doing that music course, I've learned how to write songs more, better, than I used to, and which is great. So yeah. Well, David Punch sounds like you've been inspired by by tragic events. I hope the happy songs start coming along as well. You, yeah. you need to have some happy songs. I know Alanis Morissette. Yeah. Her first offering was all uh, full of angst and 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 it feel, felt like horror. And even even Taylor Swift, you know, she writes about every ex boyfriend that that. Uh, sure, yeah. you know, <laughs> don't be an ex boyfriend of Taylor Swift because she's going to write a song about you. Let me tell you. Hello, uh, but you get you get inspiration, you know. But but uh, we've talked. A little yeah. bit, a lot like, about like, your. Go I ahead. got, I got, I got inspiration then in from. I got, sorry, I got inspiration then in from like break off then like and then falling in love and you know, the yeah. usual, the usual stuff like you know. Well, that's but beautiful I always too. Wanted, so, I always wanted to write a song that's that's um that's inspirational and what's like like everyone what's everyone in the same the same boat you know. Well, I mean, we've talked uh, in pretty good length about your grandfather how he was very inspirational or is inspirational still in his 80s still kicking it still playing with you on the uh, on the holidays uh, when you get together uh, uh, you know at social distancing of course you know at this particular moment in time but shout out all the other people in your family who who else is inspiring you and and and, and what are they doing teaching you uh, upbringing uh, bringing up david punch along the way well, I can't forget about my parents because they'll kill me if I don't mention them. Ah. Uh, Susan, Susan, Susan Punch and Sam Punch. Um, they really hit me as well throughout the few, throughout throughout my life. Um, also, my 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 two brothers, um, Dara and Stephen. Um, they're great as well. Um, but they're a pain sometimes. You know, you know, with siblings, <laughs> it can be a pain. But uh, 
I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest of them, so I should be the man and uh, guide them through life. David Punch, uh, you the problems. man. What, what, <laughs> what are they all up to? What, what, are, they, what do they do? Uh, are they in, in, in any kind of creative uh, business or, or are they, they finding Joe jobs uh, and, and uh, uh, becoming upstanding uh, my, members of society? My brother, my brother, my, my younger brother now, Dara Steven, now he's working in... Um, He's working in the supermarket at the moment because over here now it's, it's gone crazy now because over Christmas. Um, but he, he's doing uh, journalism. He's, he's trying to get into journalism at the moment. Um, so that's what he's trying to get into. Um, then my younger, my younger brother then is inside in, in high school. So he's in, he's only he's only fifteen. And okay. then my mom is a um, is a. Um, my mom does um, care for um, fostering, so she does fostering as well. And then uh, my dad then works in the factory, so no, that's good. And then a few of my friends then, my my like two of my friends are my biggest, my other music inspirations as well. And one of them is called Adam McCartney, and um, he used to run. Um, he's probably one of the best piano players in Cork. One hundred percent. He's my. He's both. He's my age as well. He's twenty five, twenty six, and he used to, he used to work with um, Ultra Festival over in Miami. Oh and yeah, I've worked Europe that festival. Well. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. Um, I'm hoping to go over there next year. Hopefully with him, because oh. he knows a few contacts over there. Um, so be, hopefully be prepared. Next year. Be prepared to get really crazy. Uh, I'm from Miami, Florida. I'm born and raised. Oh, no, in, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, born and raised in Miami. I'm I'm only here in Central Arkansas myself now. But but yeah, I've worked that Ultra Fest myself. I I've I've been on the oh, ones and twos, and, and uh, I worked uh, with Gloria Estefan on at at her club uh, Bongos right down the street uh, while Ultra Fest is going. So uh, people were going back and forth up and down the the beach. But be prepared to see a lot of bodies just, you know, having a great time and just it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it will expand your mind, uh, so to speak. Uh, yeah, look forward. Uh, from, yeah, I look forward for it now because <laughs> my, friend, my friend Adam, he's working behind the scenes as well. Like, so, yeah, it's great. Looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed if you do, if you do go over there. Oh, for um, sure. But my other friend, um, Keen the Crow, he's actually signed with um, Billy Eilish's label over in America. He's actually currently in the UK at the moment because of over COVID, but he's flying over to LA in uh, next year now to work over there with, with her label, so it's absolutely unbelievable. And he was actually one of my music inspirations in Cork as well, like so it's absolutely great. You know? Well, David Punch, as far as I'm concerned, you're internationally known because here we are talking <laughs> on this great thing we call the internet internationally uh, using the technology that's out, uh, available. We can use the tools that are uh, given to us uh, for good uh, and, and, and inspire each other. And, and you're inspiring people as it is uh, coming from, uh, you know, be, you know, be, challenges or not. Pe we overcome those challenges. Uh, you know, yeah. you already talked about your cousin who, uh, you know, had just recently got paralyzed. My goodness, what a challenge that is. Yeah, to, a to, challenge, yeah. I, I wonder, you know, could I come through that? Could I overcome that? But other people do. You know, yes, you're, you're going to live in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. But that's not that's not, not what's going to define you. That that. That's a, that's just a piece of, of what, uh, you know, you could do so many things still and you having a mind that's not the same as the majority of other people, but there certainly are other people that think exactly or, or very similarly to, to what you do and you were able to channel it into music and, you know, are there other avenues that you like to e explore? I mean, it, it says that, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at your bio. It, it says that you're a, a motivational speaker of sorts. Uh, are you wanting to get into that? Yeah. Is that something that's happening? I want to point to it. That's something that's happening at the moment. I, I'm trying, I'm trying to look into it for next year after Christmas, definitely trying to do motivational speaking. Um, I actually did one of them uh, a few years ago. Um, just talking about my 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 uh, my my Aspergers and how I coped with it in, school, in secondary school, which is great. I got very good feedback from it. Um, I also did a talk in college as well in front of about 30, 40 people. Um, just talking about my time in college and having this disability. Um, just how I over overcame it and the help I got was absolutely unbelievable. Um, from the uh, from um uh, from um from the ASD unit in 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 school to um. 
aspect services which I'm which I'm with now that's helping me coping. Um, I also with the services in psychology as well. They were very good as well. There's a disability service in college as well, so they were very helpful as well. But um, yeah, I got a lot of help. I mean, how did you feel? Because uh, you said that you were you had trouble uh, confronting or talking to people one on one, or or you know, in social uh, instances, you had some some trouble. But yeah. how, I mean, speaking in front of hundred people, two hundred people, how many people are, are you speaking in front of? And how did you overcome that fear of uh, of speaking in, in front of people? Um, just 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 do jokes, just like just just make just make fun of it, like. That's how I did it. That's how I got caught. Uh, I would be breaking it. I would be. Sh- I would be. I uh, what's the word now? Uh, I, I think they understand breaking. Nice. Uh, uh, you would be yeah, making yeah. making a little mess in your shorts. I get it. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Now. Yeah. Uh, I'll be doing that and like just like oh like I can't I can't do it. But like when you do it, then it's exactly one of the best feelings ever, and I would love to do it in the future. Oh, to have people. Like, and especially like I also like I want to do it like in person, but I also like like you know if I have to do it with technology, I would definitely do it through technology as well. Oh yeah, with the things that we're living in at the moment. Look for David Punch all over the world, inspiring people at, at a theater near you. Whether you, I mean, you could probably incorporate <laughs> music into your into your motivational speaking and make a, more yeah, of a show out of it. That's what I do. Exactly, that's what I'm doing, uh, and that's the plan. That's the, that's the plan, isn't it? That's that, the plan. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Well, anybody uh, five years ago that was asked, "Hey, what's your five year plan?" They were wrong. They were completely wrong because this year has been a complete uh, a mess, uh, you know, know, so to speak. 2020, uh, you know, especially for uh, for creatives and people that that were planning on doing big giant shows. But you know, what's your your five year plan? You you have this group uh, of fellas and give shout outs to the people that that are in your band. And is it is strict? Is it just going to be called the David Punch Band or David Punch Music, or do you have a another name for the band that that you're putting together? I haven't really thought of it. Like I probably it would probably be called the David Punch Band if it does come to it. But uh, shout out to uh, Nicholas O'Reardon. He's very. Um, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday to him. Hey. He's listening. Happy um, birthday. Yeah, it's his birthday today. Um, so he was like he was part of the band at that time. Um, there was Rory Rory Taylor. He was the he was the uh, bass player of the band. Um, I knew him through my course in in, in CSN. That's in Cloister Stefan Efa. That was the music co- uh, that was the course that was sorry. That was the college that he went to for the music course. Um so he was he was very helpful, he was very good. Um oh forget the name <laughs> forget the name of the drum artist. I knew I knew this was gonna happen. I knew this was gonna happen. Oh here I, I am putting David was, Punch on the spot. I think his name was David, I said. I think his name was David, I think. Oh fantastic. It's good to give Punch credit John. where credit is due, but, uh, like yeah. I said. Uh, you know, you you you're a solo artist, but you don't do it all by yourself. You have other people that help you along the way. Yes, you, with the equipment yeah. that you have in your house, you can make a, a decent enough uh, uh, demo. Yeah. And and I'm glad that you have a producer that's putting that demo exactly, like, and mixing and mastering yeah. and all the magic that they do with their uh, with their equipment with their finely tuned ears as well. Man, any yeah, other like after like. Go ahead. Like after that, after that gig, after that gig, I did, I did a solo song. I actually did one of my favorite songs. I did a, what did I did? Um, like after that, after that, after that gig in the Cray Lane, um, with all the band, I got, I got encore, and I went up and did one of the songs. Of, what did I did? I did uh, Bruce Springsteen's uh, "The River," which is like one of my favorite wow. songs ever, and I did that, and it was great, unbelievable. But uh, yeah, it's great, love it. Oh, absolutely. Bruce Springsteen, a, a fan, one of the greatest concerts that I ever saw back in, I think it was 1984, his Born in the USA concert tour. Oh, and this yeah. is in Miami in the Orange Bowl where the Miami Ooh. Dolphins uh, football team were, were playing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I saw them. Uh, he did a concert. It was uh, three hours and four. Uh, 15 minutes into it he collapsed on stage had to Jeez. had to get to his knees 
They took him off stage for 15 minutes. He came back on stage for another encore for 45 more minutes. So Man. over four oh hours of entertainment. This is a hard yeah. working man. And, you know, Bruce Springsteen is not by himself. He It's the E Street Band yeah, as well. E Street Band, uh, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And, yeah, one no, of the greatest I concerts <laughs> I ever saw. Yeah, it was my first ever concert as well when he played in Cork, and it was like 2013. I was like, I can't forget it. Was, nah. Great. David Punch, uh, 2013 was a turning point for you in your music endeavors. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, you know, you seeing this concert had to be inspirational. He said, wow, people oh, oh, can actually okay. get up on oh, yeah. stage because and make a living out of this? I want to tell you the story, okay? Please. Yeah, okay. So what happened was I actually was in college uh, with this guy called uh, John Joyce. And he's from Middleton, which is the, you know, the you here of the Jameson Whiskey? No, I haven't. Go ahead, school me. Oh, uh, babe. So it's a famous whiskey a company in Ireland. It's called Jameson Whiskey. It's okay. Br- it's actually brewed and stilled in, in Middleton. And um, it's, fa- it's, it's famous all over the world. Okay. So basically what ha- so what, ha- what really happens is that um, when John was playing, John used to play in the Castle Marshall Hotel, which is a very fancy five-star hotel in, Middle- in Castle Marshall. And during 2013, uh, Bruce Springsteen was staying in the Castle Marshall Hotel. And he was telling me, my friend John was telling me that he actually played for uh, Bruce Springsteen when he was actually staying in the hotel uh, that <laughs> night. And he was like, they got like, I remember he was telling me that he got like one of the whiskeys that was very, very dear. Like, and uh, he was telling me that. On the night, on the night of the concert in Cork, he didn't play the river, but um, he actually played it. He played river for my friend John. Then at the gig at the at the hotel, like just like it's crazy, like it's mad. That is amazing. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's, you you have to realize, so, yeah. you have to realize that musicians aren't just musicians for themselves. Uh, musicians, pretty much, uh, you have to li- have a love for music. And I'm guessing uh, Bruce Springsteen is no different. He 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 has to be a fan of other people's music as well. Uh, so I imagine one day uh, he's going to be listening to David Punch music. Well, hopefully, hopefully. I hope so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> David David Punch will but be yeah, known Sheeran, all over Ed the world. Sheeran. Go ahead. Ed Sheeran is another one as well. Uh, one of my favorite acts as well. So Ed Sheeran, Coldplay, Rob Bruce Springsteen. Uh, yeah, they're like they're they're one of my favorites. Well, I noticed the covers that you have are very contemporary, and it it just shows you're a younger man. But there there is some good music out there, uh, you know, between Maroon Five and yeah, the uh, Ed yeah. Sheeran for sure. I love to do and, and Coldplay. Like, Say again. Yeah. I definitely love to do the odd deity stuff now. And, and Col- the you know, songs Col- Oh my goodness! But uh, uh, amazing! You're you're a a great songwriter, a great musician already at such a young age. You're so far ahead of the game, and and it's only going to get better. So, do you think that that you're going to be doing more? Uh, and you know, in the in the five year plan, hopefully, as we go forward, this COVID is not is going to be over real soon. And from what I understand, the mm. the UK is already um, uh, you know over in that area. They're already inoculating people, uh, giving people uh, that hopefully the, the a good treatment that will help to uh, to to, yeah. to bring some normalcy. Yeah, there was like actually like there was a ninety year old woman from Ireland who actually got received the first vaccine ever of the COVID nineteen vaccine. I heard her on the news. I I, I think she was. Uh, uh, she there was like a scream of joy everything. with the crowd. I think there were people around her that were, you know, yeah. at least uh, there was a, a crowd that was watching from far off. Hopefully, but uh, yeah. you know, hopefully she does well, and hopefully the people that that are getting this very first vaccine do well. But uh, you know, there's yeah. going to be some normalcy in five years. We're going to uh, you know remember this. Hopefully, it'll be in our rearview mirrors as a distant memory. Uh, uh, you know. Yeah. That 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 we, you know, we'll, we'll learn from, but it'll be in the past. We'll be able to hug our yeah. our brothers and sisters and friends again. But uh, you know, what's your five year plan? Do you do you want to play uh, with with your David Punch music band, or do you want to play solos or or a combination of the both? Yeah. Um. Just before just before I say it, there and I just had to actually had a scare of actually COVID nineteen there a couple of days ago. Um, that's why I wasn't. That's why I wasn't able to talk to you that time. Oh my! Um, 
But um, yeah, yeah, the scare of it. Yeah, uh, one of my friends. I was a close contact with uh, one of my workmates from from work, and I was self isolating, and I I only found out the news about it, and I was, I was scared, and I goes, "Oh no, I'm gonna do like because my first time." So that's why I couldn't. That's why I couldn't talk that time. To you. I'm sorry about that. Well, hopefully, no, hopefully he's doing well. And, and my goodness, the, the young people seem to go through it. Uh, you know, yeah. w- w- you know, immune systems uh, being what they are. Uh, hopefully they, he, yeah. he goes through and his convalescence is, is quick. Yes. Well, but, uh, well, my five-year plan. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you want to start uh, playing plan. gigs uh, and making records? Uh, do people make records uh, anymore? Mm, I, don't know, I don't know about records. Uh, I know them do songs like for streaming now at the moment but you can do the rec you know, the uh, records as in with the record player <laughs> i know some people do it um but uh definitely do solo stuff and definitely try and give do mix between solo stuff and bands yeah. um i also want to do motivational speaking uh, talk to like people who, who um like groups such as like um like the disability service now in, say, in my college, in my old college, um, the aspect group that I'm with at the moment, and other autism and um, disability services all over Ireland. Um, contact um, contact people now who are like who will feel the same as me and just talk to them, talk to them, and you know have a chat and just like I would like to like speak to people now who are in the same position as me, like who felt the same as me before, and like. Just have a chat with them and speak to people, speak to crowds of people, tell them my story, and hope they'll get inspired by my story and my music. Well, if so people want to, like. yeah, and hopefully get gigs next year and <laughs> hopefully play, you know, all the big venues and you know, but like the, the main thing is to inspire people, and we're not, we're all, not, we're all different in our own unique way. Well, David Punch, if you want, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, music wise or public speaking wise, how, how do they do? How do they do that? First of all, first of all, I could be releasing uh, my um, oh, what's merchandise. I'm thinking of releasing um, um, t-shirts with "I am different" on it, and with my name, with, with my name at the back, and all my socials at the back. So my socials are uh, Facebook, which is David Punch Music. I also have a LinkedIn page as well for my motivation to speak and stuff and maybe some of my music stuff. I'm also on Twitter as well, um, hashtag David Punchy Muse one um, I'm also on Instagram as well, if you look up David Punch Music. And what, else, what am I forgetting? YouTube. I'm also on YouTube as well. So make sure to check out my YouTube, David Punch Music on YouTube. And yeah, that's it. Absolutely, man. I would, I'll put all those links on the in the show notes so people know where to find them. Uh, pretty much, if you look up David Punch Music, you're going to find you. And uh, the really, the davidpunchmusic.com is is well made. Who who yeah. made that website for you? Is that you? Um, yeah, that was me. I made it all through Wix. Wix.com. That was my lifesaver. So you uh, Wix there, it was great. Well, it's clean. It definitely is clean, and and it it has all you need to know. Uh, it's a it's a nice website yep. to look at. Uh, I see your Facebook and your Instagram. You don't have your YouTube and your LinkedIn and your Twitter, but it's okay. Uh, I have I, I have all that. <laughs> I'm still updating. I'm still I'm still I'm still upgrading my um my um my website at the moment. <laughs> so they'll be all be added to the website in Zoom. Well, it's good that you have the technology. You, you have the knowledge to, to put all this together. You know, back when I was first starting, it was two turntables and a microphone. Now I have to be so much more. You, you know, as a musician, you used to be able to just pick up your guitar and get up on stage. Now you have to be the promoter. Yeah. You have to be uh, the, the, the guy who's the mixing engineer, the, uh, the guy who's making the website. That's, uh, you have to be so many more things, and you're expected to be so yeah. much more. The, it, it, you know, in this day. That's what I've been taught. That's oh, yeah. what I've been taught now in college. I've been taught. I've been taught like the musician side of things, the production side of things, um, the promotion, and you know the marketing of my of my music, mm. the, perform- the performance of my music as well. So I've been taught all this. I've been doing the, the recording as well, recording music, recording songs, and I've been also doing live recording as well. So you know, doing live uh, recording for live gigs. You know, oh. so. I've been true. I've, I've, I, I've had experience with everything, so I'm not. 
Oh yeah, I'm not David, new to it. David Punch. All right, well, let's uh, bring this thing in, in for a landing uh, as we uh, as we wind things down. Any other avenues you want to explore? Tell people about uh, David Punch. Um, definitely, definitely the motivation to speak. You know, it's going to be a big one now for twenty twenty one. Um, I will still be releasing songs as well throughout the year. Um, hopefully, definitely do more release music um, throughout the year. Definitely tell more, tell more of my stories. I'm actually thinking of doing a proper podcast. I actually did. I actually do have podcasts as well. well come um, on, so spit it out. Tell people. Yeah, I I shouldn't have said it. No. No, I want to listen Darren. to your podcast. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. What's it called? <laughs> I actually haven't looked. I haven't actually seen my podcast. My cop. My cop. I'm sorry. I haven't seen my podcast name in ages. Sorry. No. It's living with Aspergers. Oh, okay. So look up David Point and call living. It's and the podcast is called Living with Aspergers. It's on uh, Spotify now and all those all those streaming platforms. I drive around I eight hours a day and I listen to podcasts all day. So yes, yeah, it will be yeah, on yeah, my yeah, feed. Was, yeah, listen. Yeah, the uh, the sound quality at the start now was um it was pretty bad because I was only using my um just recording it through my um my headphones, but um it got better then because I started using my Blue Yeti microphone, and um, yeah, the sound quality got better. But um yeah, hopefully, I have really haven't got into the podcasting again. I have to because I only did two or three podcast episodes, and my first one was very my first one was was good. Because I did it with actually a journalist, a music journalist from Cork, See, um, which is great. You know, when I'm doing podcasts, I, I've done a lot of them by myself. I have another one called What Makes You Smarter, but I don't like that one so much. You know, it, it's just filling my head with knowledge. If I don't have someone in particular to talk to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do that one. But I like the What Makes You Famous podcast because I get to talk to people and bounce ideas yeah. off of people. It's not all about me. It's about you, uh, David Punch. So I, I'm, I'm very happy that you came on this podcast and, and told a little bit about your story and about what's going on in your life and how you came to be yeah. you know I, I i'm glad you had your grandfather as an inspiration uh you know so to speak and you have you know your whole family that's that's helping you yeah. and pushing you along yeah. and you got a good group of friends that's doing as well i know i'm recapping yeah. a bit but uh you know uh, any other shout outs you want to give and, and then uh we can yeah. close this thing off shout out to my uh my uh, fam my family just give a shout out to all my friends and my family and uh, all the friends who i've grown up with um, especially through times that I that I felt bad, um, that I felt sad as well. Um, shout out to my grandfather, who's uh, my big inspiration, and shout out to my uncle, um, my uncle Alan Alan Cochrane, who was actually a singer. He loves his singing. Um, he was actually he was actually wrote, he actually recorded the CD for um, with his son Daniel, who was my godfather, and. We did it there in October. We did a CD. It was just great for the family to have a listen to. Um, so it was great. And my my aunt, my aunt Teresa and Trisha, and um, yeah, it's great. It's unbelievable. Well, um, they were they're all music oriented, and I'd like to say thank you to you, Dan, for having me on the show today. Um, it's actually great um, to um, you know, to talk to people, um, especially over in, in the United States as well, talk about my story. And, yeah, it's, thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Well, David Punch, the pleasure was completely mine, of course. Uh, I usually finish these things off with last words for the people. This could be words to live by, something that you heard a long time ago, uh, something maybe a mantra, or it could just be whatever pops up into your head at this particular moment in time. Yeah. David Punch, last words for the people. Don't give up. We're in 2020, we're in the pandemic, but don't give up. We're all in this together, and we're all different. Thank you. Well, there you have it, party people. David Punch. David Punch music. David Punch motivational speaker. David Punch inspirational. Yeah, David Punch. So much to uh, he's He's a young man of 25, and he's already got his head on straight, and he's wanting to help people out not just with his music, but also also with his words, letting people know that you're not alone if you have Asperger's or if you're differently challenged. You know, most people in the world might think one way, but there's a whole group of other people that think in a different way. And I mean think uh, their minds work in a different way. Uh, their chemicals in their minds 
work uh, brains work in a different way and you can overcome that or it, maybe it's not a, a, a about overcoming it's just you know living living through living uh, you know trying to to make your way in the world How, however your the chemicals in your brain work <laughs> you know so uh david punch i see nothing but great things from you and, and i appreciate that song uh different it's a it's a beautiful song it really is it's uh it, it really is it lets people know the problems the troubles that you went through not being exactly the same not fitting the click in your school and you've put that down into music and words and it's beautiful it's beautiful. It's a, it's very inspirational and I appreciate that. And I look forward to hearing your podcast. Uh, you know, don't, don't stop doing that either. You know, you might be able to help some people in that respect. I know it's time, time consuming. It, it takes you away from other things that you may, may want to do. So use it in addition to other things. I'm trying not to let this podcast consume my whole life, maybe two or three a week at the most. Like this week, I'm only doing two, you know? And, and, you know, some weeks are busier than others with other parts of my life. So maybe I'll only do one. Maybe I'll do three. Maybe I'll do five. It depends, you know? So uh, if the time and the person, uh, you know, wants to speak to me, I guess this is, uh, thank you so much, David Punch, for being on the podcast, the What Makes You Famous program and telling a bit of your story and giving credit where credit is due, shouting out all the people that have helped you along. Now, I turn my attention to you, the loyal listener. If you would like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.